phrases you must. So we're going to do a YouTube video. Are you okay with being on YouTube? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, if I consent. <laughs> All right. So what are you going to do today? Brief in service and explain how the Lucas operates and the benefits of using it. Okay. You think you can train this motley crew how to do it? <laughs> I'll do my best. Okay. So the um, GRUER has got their own Lucas device now. Correct. So they have one. Um, they've been seeing a lot of patients come in from Bull Cross already, the local EMS service, so now they've got their own, so they can use theirs and transport patients throughout the facility if they need to, which would be really nice. Oh, that's cool. We've been waiting for this. I know. It's been a while, so. It's like Christmas has arrived. <laughs> this is the Lucas. It's a mechanical CPR device, and the way to really think about it is it just does perfect compressions per the AHA guidelines. So it does 102 compressions per minute, 2.1 inch compression depth, a full 50-50 duty cycle, so just as much time going down is coming up, and then a full chest wall recoil, which is really aided a little bit by this suction cup on here, which you guys can see if you want to come around as well. So again, I like to think of this as just a machine that does perfect compressions for you. So if you think about the bottom of this piston here, it's mimicking the heel of your palm. Um, as far as placement, operation, everything like that, it'll really help you out. So in order to get started, there's a backboard that we place underneath the patient. It can be done either way, but it does have a picture on here that'll show you exactly what you're shooting for for placement. So there's this diagram here that shows you really want to align this up with the top of the armpit. Um, but ideally what you're going for is the center of this backboard to be right underneath, uh, in this case the mannequin, uh, the sternum in between the nipple line, so right where we would do compressions normally. So in order to place it underneath, you can come one of two ways. You can really slide it up if you lift the patient and roll them, slide it under or depending on what type of surface you're on, if you need to lift the head and neck and slide it in from the top, you can do that as well, as long as you get it right underneath and, and center where we do compression. So we've got that on, we've got our patient hooked up. And in order to attach it, you can do one of two ways. If somebody's doing compressions like this and you can come in from the side, you can hook up one side and then come over their hands and attach the other. Or if you're on a surface where it's a little bit easier, you can come in from the top and just connect both at the same time. So once you've got it on, I like to pull up on both arms just to make sure they're both connected so you don't have one that comes loose during operation. And then once you do, it's really easy. It's just one, two, three. So there's a power button right here at the top. It'll start up and it'll light up in this one position, which means you can raise and lower this. So it actually has a diagram on here that shows you you just take two fingers and lower this into position. So we want to get this close to the sternum right where we want it to do compressions. And then we've got two options here. We've got a continuous CPR button and then one for your non-intubated patients at a 30 to 2 compression ratio. So I'll show you continuous first here. So you'll see it locked down, and in the first few, as it sizes up, we're a little less powerful, and then it locks into that 2.1 inch compression depth. So at this point, you can just let it run. It's in continuous mode. It'll just continue to do compressions until you need to pause for any reason. So at this point, if you do need to pause to look at the underlying rhythm, or if you need to defibrillate, there's a pause button right here in the center. You hit that, and then once you're ready to start compressions again, you can hit that play button. So very minimal interruptions, even less so than if you've got fully uh, rested staff on there switching off every two minutes. You can really maintain that perfusion level, so it's a great benefit to having this machine. If you have a non-intubated patient and you need to do a 30 to compression ratio on there, it's available as well, so I'll show you what that looks like. By hitting that button, it'll just count out 30 compressions, the light will come on, you'll hear a tone, and then it'll pause just long enough for a few breaths, and then start back up automatically. And that same thing as before, if you need to pause for any reason, you can hit that pause button right there. If you need to raise and lower, you can just go back to the one position, press that. If you need to move it around after you defibrillate it, if it needs to be adjusted, you can do so. Um, and then to turn it off, it's just the power button right here. When you want to disconnect it, there's these two rings. You can just pull up on these, and it'll release. And snap it back into place afterwards. So there's two batteries hooked up with it currently right now. So you've got one battery on here, and then you guys also have a charger available. So hopefully you'll at least have one fully charged at all times. Each battery, when fully charged, will give you 45 minutes of operation, so theoretically you can get up to 90 minutes total if they're both fully charged. But the great part about in the hospital setting is you guys are 
usually within reach of an outlet. So there is this AC adapter here, which will give you quite a bit of distance, and you can actually plug it into the wall. So my recommendation is when you're using it, once you're situated in a place where you're not going to be moving for any period of time, just plug it in. At that point, you know, we're seeing some really extended cases of CPR with this. This will allow it to run indefinitely or as long as you need it to um, in order to get the patient uh, to where you need them to be. So, All right, fair enough. Um, there's wrist straps here too. So a lot of times if you see the patient come in from the EMS, they'll especially use it pretty heavily. This will keep the arms up out of the way. It'll kind of look like they're holding it on themselves essentially. What about injuries, rib fractures, yeah. cardiac contusions? So it's a common question that comes up a lot of times. Um, the incidence of injury should be very similar, if not completely similar, to um, the perfect AHA got on a CPR. So it's really, like I said before, it's doing the same thing as you would do if you were doing following the guidelines and maintaining manual compressions at that rate and depth. One thing to point out too that always comes up, especially with the mannequin of this size here, is patient fit. So we've done initial studies and follow-up data. We very consistently miss about 3% of the larger patients and 2% of the smaller. There's no weight limit, there's no size, anything like that, but it really comes down to the patient build. If their chest wall is too deep, then this won't work for them. So the way to fit that on there is if you turn this on and you've got this in the upright position and you place your patient in, if you have to squeeze in some of this soft tissue here on the sides and you're fine, um, the only real concern is that you're not compressing that sternum when this is in the upright position. So you want to maintain that ability to get up to that full neutral position and get that full range of motion on there. Similarly for your smaller patients, you want to make sure that you can lower this down and make contact with the sternum without um, you know, having any gaps on here and being able to run without alarming. So again, we tend to miss only about 5% of patients total. And we also have a neck stabilization strap, so if you do need to, you can place this underneath the patient's head and then there's two clips that'll hold that in place. Let me ask, is everybody going to like miss the physical exercise of doing CPR? <laughs> no Lucas. So. No Lucas. No Lucas. Not me, no. Lucas. Get two ready. Charlie, you're ready. Nope. You want to compress it? Yeah, sure. So what do we got? Witness the rest by us. Can you hear on middle? Whoa. One of the things that, I, that I've been real impressed with, I think some of my other videos have actually shown, is that it makes the resuscitation so calm and collected and uh, uh, people are not uh, as stressed or physically uh, pressured. Uh, and uh, so that, that uh, having this thing just quietly doing its thing, the rest of the resuscitation, you can just really focus on on medications and drugs and, and patient care. Right. Yeah, so it frees up staff and personnel to do other things, like you said, and it does. It removes that element of stress. Yeah. So you can focus just on on all the other things that go into a code and not yeah. worry about timing, switching off every two minutes. It's, it's really a, a great benefit. Yeah, just watch some of my other videos and right. uh, and you'll see in real life what it looks like. So. Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks. Thank you.